Good afternoon, everyone, to the 2023 European Para Table Tennis Championships here in Sheffield. Back on table one here at the English Institute of Sport, the home of British Para Table Tennis. And for this week, at least, the home of European Para Table Tennis as well. For this afternoon session, we'll be with you, starting you off again, myself, Matea Pintar, and joined by Gavin Maguire from the Irish Para Table Tennis team. Welcome back. Thanks for having me back. And on table one, it's men's singles, class one. Robert Davis, the home, not just hopeful, but a big interest and favorite against Alexandru Imbuzan from Romania. Rob Davis reigning four-time consecutive European champions in this discipline, but said himself he's not only looking to secure his fifth consecutive title and a ticket for the Paralympic Games, he's one of the few players who's actually happy to not see the Europeans coming on for the last four years as he was injured for a lot of that time and is only returning. But be before we see how he does in this first match for men's singles class one, let's also thank the ITTF British Para Table Tennis, Table Tennis England, Sheffield City Council, the UK Sport and the National Lottery for helping us put, us put up this event. 267 competitors from 35 countries will be attempting to secure their spot at next year's Paralympic Games or at least bring home one of the medals. 22 classes, 11 for men and 11 for women in the singles event, followed later on on Friday and Saturday by the doubles competition. The championships will have matches running from 9 a.m. through 7 p.m. every day. The daily schedule can be found on the ITTF website. And if you still can and are wanting, of course, welcome to come watch Table Tennis Live. The tickets for this uh, event are available online via the British Para Table Tennis. Expectations, Gavin? Well, you know, Matea, Rob Davis is uh, one of my favorite players on the tour, so... I'm going to have to stick true to my heart and say my money's on Rob. Yeah, and with uh, four titles under his belt, uh, I'm sure a lot of other people's as well. Yeah, I would say he's probably the safe bet here in this match, but I'm sure in Busan is uh, he's no easy match for Rob. Yeah, no head-to-head -head for these two players, although they've both been on the circuit for quite a while. So... Uh, if nothing else, perhaps the element of surprise uh, also something the Romanian could take advantage of. Yeah, absolutely. And it's, it's kind of interesting to see him here today. He's one of the less active players on the tour. Yeah, Rob has mentioned that he's still recovering from all the injuries, getting back on top and into his best competition mode. He won silver at his uh, last international at Czech Para Open this year in singles. Two service errors directly from Imbusan. Yeah, server and return a lot uh, <laughs> of what's happening right now. since it's day one perhaps worth mentioning that class one is the lowest of the wheelchair classes one through five um, so you'll be seeing uh, both players using strap-ons for the rackets because the arm movement and grip is limited as well as their upper body yeah and it's probably worth mentioning we'll see slightly different rallies and types of points in the men's class one it'll be a lot more tactical shorter rallies sh uh, shorter balls on the table really trying to exploit the opponent's uh, lack of movement sooner or later also the tetra loop as we like to call it i'm sure yeah i think you need to explain that one to the viewers Matea. 
<laughs> yeah, I have, I have done so uh, today earlier, but uh, that was women's class too. Um, I think maybe better to wait for it and <laughs> see perfect opening for this uh, tetra loop. So very spinned high ball, possibly a short uh, um, to the net. Yeah, I call it a far less technical name. I, I call it the up and under, but uh, that's just me. A strong start for the defending four-time champion, Rob Davis, here. You wouldn't notice he's had any kind of problems <laughs> since his last title. No, he doesn't look... Uh, not really showing any weaknesses right now. Yeah, that was a quick conclusion of uh, the first game. If we were a little bit mean, we could say that it will take them longer to get from the table and back than it did to finish this first set. Yeah, really, uh, really quick. A lot of mistakes from Imbuzan. Rob Davis just taking advantage. And uh, can't really get worse on the Romanian side, so... Hopefully we'll see slightly longer points in the next one. Yeah, he really didn't have to do much and there's not much to be discussed in technical terms other than, uh, yeah, Busan just has to um, bring on a better game. Yeah, he's got to start to put some balls on the table, really. That's the, the crux of the whole game, but to be honest, uh, he just there was nothing, nothing on show in the first set. Rob will be happy with that. The quicker he gets through this match and on to the next is, uh, is what he's going to be looking for, conserve as much energy as possible. Yeah, especially as the first, uh, or we like to call it, warm-up match, uh, then uh, it's it's easier if it goes on fast and you don't have to put too much on the an effort. Yeah, 100%, and it's, it's good for the confidence to feel like you can get through a match like this quite easily without, without really getting out of gear one. 11 players in this class competing overall, divided along three groups in the round robin. Two will be proceeding to the knockouts. <laughs> so will be Imbuzan now starting us off for the game two. Luzan just getting a bit of help on his wheelchair there, something something up. Rob Davis calls out an opportunity to explain that uh, in wheelchair para table tennis game when serve the ball has to cross the end line rather than one of the sidelines of the table at the opponent's side. Yeah, it's a good point and you'll see a lot from the service obviously as we mentioned it has to be over the end line but you'll see a lot of balls off the side then as the rallies go on. seen the continuation basically of what uh, we were in 
the first game, just serve and receive. Yeah, I don't think class one is notorious for really long rallies, but this is uh, this is even a little bit less than normal. Well, that was the longest we've seen so far. <laughs> Some action now. Just full of errors really here in Busan. Hasn't got going at all, unfortunately, for, for us all watching on. But, uh, I don't think Rob Davis is going to be too worried. The quicker it's over, the better for him. And definitely a difficult start for Mbuzan. First match against the four-time reigning champion and the home hero. Yeah, it's a bit of an ask really, isn't it? Especially since he's an inexperienced competitor in terms of international events. Rare mistake for Davis, but at this point, I dare say he can afford it. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that two of uh, Imbusan's points have been service errors from Rob. So again, it doesn't say much for the for the Romanian in this game. When you have this kind of an advantage, you can also afford to risk a little bit more with the serve. Seven game points. Doesn't need them. <laughs> yeah, quick and easy. 2 0, Rob Davis, well on the way to perhaps his new European Championships title. Interesting to see the role of the coach here in this game. Obviously, class one, a more severe range of disabilities. Coach plays almost the role of a, a carer at times. How yeah, about you've been a coach, so what do you say in a situation like that? Yeah, there's, there's not too much I, you can be really saying to aid the Romanian's cause here. I think it's uh, just go for it, you know, you have nothing to lose now. and some weights as well on Rob Davis, all to make sure the wheelchair moves only in the direction you want it to. This really is the ideal match for Rob Davis to 
to start this tournament, just get his game on, lose the nerves if he has any. Yeah, probably not a probably not a great match for our spectators at home who were hoping for some longer points, maybe a bit more tense affair, but good for all the GB fans watching anyway. See a, a local man get it, get the business done. And this win more or less ensures they will be seeing him more later on again in the competition, which is where he wants to be anyway. We're still a couple of days away from there, but a quick reminder that the finals will be played on Thursday. All the medal ceremonies as well before we kick up with the doubles events a new thing in para table tennis or at least at the european championships yeah, very interesting it used to be a, a team event where players would play singles and doubles in a, in a combined match but now we're, we're just seeing doubles point of interest perhaps since serve and receive is mostly what we're watching here that the players are serving with their rackets so with their playing arm other than tossing the ball with the non-playing arm which would normally be the norm but due to the disability of course um, a bit different in class one Well, that was over really fast. 11-2 in game three, and we have 3-0 for Rob Davis of Great Britain, continuing his path to his fifth consecutive European Championship singles gold. Alexandru Imbuzan will have another chance against Endre Mayor from Hungary tomorrow.
Welcome back then to the English Institute of Sport here in Sheffield where the European Para Table Tennis Championships kicked off today with the singles event. On table one with you once again myself Matea Pintar and Gavin Maguire, the Irish national para table team manager, former coach and so on. Welcome back and uh, the two players in men's singles class one are just warming up for their first encounter in this group two. Thomas Matthews for Great Britain for the co home crowd against Gregorios Krisikos from Greece. Beautiful pronunciation.
11 players battling it off here for a set of four medals and uh, even more important ticket to Paris next year, the Paralympic Games. Matches the clear favorite as world number seven, even though we, the two players haven't met yet so far in an international competition. But um, Matthews won his last international at Czech Para Open against his teammate Rob Davis, who we've seen on this table just before taking his first win. The two of them very much looking forward to possibly battling it off once again in a final here in front of the home crowd. But before any of that happens, of course, they have to proceed from the group stages and the knockouts to follow. Best of five starting off with Matthews. Another class uh, one match, but uh, from the very start, to a very different one uh, from what we s saw before. Yeah, in contrast to Rob Davis, who we just watched, Tom is a little bit more attack orientated, let's say. It's uh, long serves, trying to get a chance to, to play a strong attacking shot and, and dominate from the beginning. No matter what happens here, we've got a better match than our last one anyway. A very fast paced one at least. Some more action on the table. The tetra shot <laughs> attempt from the very start for the Greek. Attacking style coming through nicely from Matthias here, right? Yeah, straight away you can see what his intentions are. But not to say he can't do the angles and the high balls like everybody else too. Yeah, he seems to be one of the players who has his game face on from the very first match. We, we saw a little, uh, a few favorites. Um, struggling to to get in properly at the start of today but not Matthews. yeah he doesn't look too too phased by the playing his first match at the european championships playing in the home venue doesn't seem to be affecting him straight away so that's a good sign from him yeah everything goes in this first game giving the Greek a chance to warm up himself. <laughs> Interestingly for, for Tom here, which is unusual for probably class one, he doesn't have a support on the wheelchair for his non-playing arm. Yeah, because of the extreme severity of the disability and the bad upper torso balance, uh, a lot of the players use 
the non-playing arm like a hook, so to speak, uh, on the wheelchair, like the Greeks does. Matthew not, Matthew's not so. First successful attack, if you want to call it like that, from the Greek. Defending the first out of six game points here. A little error there from Tom, too. Service mistake. Didn't take him off track. 11-9. Yeah. yeah, it should be. That's better. Um, the result doesn't really say what we saw on the table, wouldn't you think so? Yeah, I think Tom looked a little bit stronger, to be honest, than an 11-8, but a couple of unforced errors maybe towards the end of the set. Made it look a little bit better for Chrissy Kuss. there from Neil Robertson, Tom's coach. I think he's going to be telling him now maybe that he needs to obviously stay on the job, keep focused, but I think he needs to try and use all of his variations of shots, feel his way into the tournament. Day one, match one, he needs to really get comfortable playing his full range of shots out there so he can bring them into the more difficult matches as the tournament goes on. And Neil himself, a former extremely experienced player and now an experienced coach. So if, if anyone, he knows how to deal with these situations, with these types of competitions. Absolutely, and it's, it's Welshman and Welshman. Well, they know each other very well, Tom and Neil. Yeah, Matthew's actually training with the rest of the British team here in Sheffield, so this very much is his home competition. Not only because it's in Great Britain, but also the venue he's very familiar with. Yeah, what a great experience for, for all of the members of Team GB to be able to play in this home European Championships. It's something they'll remember for the rest of their lives, no matter how the results go. I've had a similar experience twice actually, so I can I can testify to that. I can't say we've ever had anything like that in Ireland, but uh, maybe someday. Yeah, Matthew's still very much on the roll. <laughs> He said about himself that he always does well in the major competition. He doesn't get bigger than that this year in para table tennis, so he seems to realize it. Yeah, I think Tom's going to be really looking for his golden ticket to Paris here. That's going to be his goal for the week. I don't think he's looking for anything less than a gold medal. No, definitely, and um, he has that confidence of beating the four-time consecutive European champion Rob Davies just ahead of this tournament at Czech Open. Well, that's a nice sense of uh, confidence that he can bring into the event, but there are obviously some other really strong players in Class 1 that he'll have to have to come through.
Krisikos making Matthews' work a little bit easier again with two serve mistakes. Yeah, we've seen quite a few service mistakes in the class one today, haven't we? I think it's uh, obviously fine margins here, really trying to hit certain points on the table to uh, get the advantage on the opponent. So that can often lead to more service mistakes than we'd be commonly used to. Yeah, but on the other hand, also less characteristic for this class because obviously serve is the one point you can from control from the very start and you won't want to miss on that advantage. Nicely reached and good timing there on that forehand. Doesn't get much better than that in terms of placement. No, he's really right on the line. To come into his own, Tom, isn't he? Looks a little bit in cruise control. And great variation actually in in serves, in switching between attacking and lobbing. He just wants to show it off. Yeah, <laughs> everything he's got from he's the beginning, you get everything. the feeling. But that that's what we said, you know that. Neil would tell him to really get a chance to try everything, experiment with everything, feel comfortable out there, and, and Tom is doing that in this set, this set. And that brings along great confidence for the next matches as well. He sets Two. himself up here with seven set points. And just one needed. Thomas Matthews didn't need much advice from Neil Robertson this time. Coming back to the table fast, looking to finish this off, no doubt. 2-0 and he only needs one more game to bring this men's singles class one group stage match to the end. Yeah, I think we're, we're in for a quick set here again. If, if things continue the way they have been, Tom is only going to be more and more confident. But I did notice uh, he's got some cool spokes on his wheelchair there, Matea, the, the GB colours. I'm uh, interested in those. Yeah, that um, goes very well with the overall styling. <laughs> yeah, did you ever have Slovenian colours on your wheelchair? Not on my wheelchair, but in my hair. <laughs> <laughs> it's all good fun. 
you train hard. Uh, this is a serious competition and we just need to have some fun with it as well. Absolutely. Good again from Tom Matthews. No real answers from the Greek here. Yeah, Krusikos, by the looks of it, will have to look for a chance to stay in this competition, continue with the tournament against Timo Natunen from Finland or Adam Urlauber from Hungary later on in the group stages for Thomas Matthews it seems it's just rolling on I don't know if you're making wheelchair puns or not Matteo with that rolling on no come on <laughs> I've heard you're good at cheesy jokes Yeah, that Tatra lob was the only shot that um, Krisikos has actually made all this match and I think only one worked out for him. You can't blame him for trying though because um, Matthews is just um, doing everything and succeeding in everything he tries. Yeah, anything he puts in Tom's reach seems to be dealt with really, really strongly from, from Tom. So. He's got to go for the really fine margins and unfortunately that's leading to more and more errors for the Greek. Yeah, even that one, it wasn't badly shortened or edged, but uh, still Matthews right on the ball. Yeah, Tom's got really an incredible reach, especially for a class one. There's not many that can get that wide on the table. Just two more points away from taking that win for Great Britain. Time now call for the Greek here, but I'm not sure what good it's going to do. One thing I think the GB boys will be really happy with is the, the lack of really energy that they've had to put into these games. You know, they're going to have conserved a lot of energy and they've gotten a chance to be out there on the table and get comfortable and these are top athletes but still in class one physicality is important thing recovery is an important thing so uh, at this kind of um, let's say easy matches can be mentally difficult to win but when you don't have to struggle from the very start it's a big bonus and especially for Matthews he got to try out all of his shots all of his tactics anyway for Rob Davis he didn't even have to do that yeah a little bit less testing for Rob Davis Tom has certainly had the chance to experiment with a few things try out a few things and get his confidence on the table whereas I think Rob is not even warmed up after that game really just finding his foot some non-wheelchair puns here for you. We can do better than that. Right then, let's focus back on for possibly the last two points of this match. There's the one. Another strong finish from Tom, setting up six match points. And here's the other. With just a little bit of luck concluding what was an excellent per performance in front of the home crowd. Giving him some love now and uh, he's well on track to that so desired 
final and possibly gold medal so far. 3-0 for Tom Matthews in men's singles class one. Short break and we'll be back at 4.30 with men's singles class five.
Thompson from Sweden and Richard Shetty from Slovakia. The umpire is Jonathan Whittaker from Scotland. On table seven, and singles plus eight, the Ultra Grutzian from Poland and Panzer Tala from Belgium. The umpire is Lyndon Griffiths from England. On table eight, men singles plus eight, Eric McGibbon from Great Britain and Maxe Radjic from Serbia. The umpire is Johan Deckel-Mestel from France. On table nine, men singles plus eight, Maxim Nikolenko from the Ukraine and Gaula Isman Zaborai from Hungary. The umpire is Catherine O'Neill from Scotland. On table 10, men singles plus eight, Thomas Bouvet from France, and Borna Joel from Croatia. The umpire is Indigo Velasieros from Spain. On table 11, men singles plus eight, Victor Niu from Ukraine, Alejandro Diaz from Spain. The umpire is Harry Jukul from England. On table 12, men singles plus eight, Clement Berthier from France, and Zeke Lindman from Israel. Thomas Purcell is the umpire from England. Welcome back to the English Institute of Sport here in Sheffield for the European Para Table Tennis Championships. My name is Yuri Matishan and I'm with Matea. Matea, who is a, a wonderful Paralympic champion herself, actually, from Slovakia. Is that right? Slovenia. Slovenia. <laughs> oh, I've just blown that one. So, um, and uh, are you enjoying your visit here so far? Uh, yeah, it's uh, after I was a player for such a long time and then away from uh, para table tennis for such a long time. Uh, this uh, commentary is actually a really good way for me to uh, keep following this wonderful sport that we love so much. So, um, and you were here in 2012 last time, weren't you, for in London? So. Uh, yeah, um, well, it wasn't my last time to England, but it was my last international competition. And I was here in Sheffield for the British Open uh, the year oh, before, sort yes. of a test event, and trained myself a lot with the GB team uh, in this arena. So it does feel like, uh, yeah, coming home away from home once oh, again. Oh, it's lovely to have you back and lovely to have you here with us. And today's game, we have um, our wheelchair event. It's, uh, it's obviously men's and it's class five. And it's between Ali Osturk from Turkey and Gerardus van de Grunsven from Holland. And do you know a little bit about these two guys on the table? Uh, well, uh, of course, uh, Ali Osturk, uh, one of the best players in the world, world number six at the moment. Uh, silver singles from the last world championships last right. year um, bronze from tokyo so definitely looking to medal here no doubt as well and uh, yeah we have 13 players in this men's singles class 5 event battling it on uh, for the medals but maybe even more importantly for uh, that golden ticket to the Paralympics in Paris next year. That's right, 22 golden tickets available from this particular Paralympic Championship, so um, a lot to play for. And, and Class 5 um, for the viewers means that they're, they're, they've got quite good mobility in terms of the classifications, which go from 1 to 5. Yeah, uh, Class 5 is uh, the highest, the most... Um, yeah, the least disabled <laughs> wheelchair class, if we can say it like that. Um, so uh, after following class one, two and three matches uh, on this table, uh, I think uh, now we have a different uh, game, a different pace uh, to look forward to 
fast game, better upper torso mobility, better balance, the most important. And uh, usually the players using smooth rubbers, a more attackive style of play. Um, so this, this should be interesting enough. Uh, even though the head-to-head -head between these two players has uh, a clear win for the Turk, he's won all nine of their previous encounters, oh, wow. the most recent one with 3-0 at the Czech Para Open this year. So that'll be a, a big hill to climb for the Dutch player. And, uh, but nonetheless, if you're going to do it, you're going to have to do it here, and you might as well start sometime. Yeah, there's no um, no match you want to head into thinking you're going to lose or wanting to lose, of course. Uh, but um, a difficult task ahead of the Dutch player. Um, should he not be successful, he'll have two more chances in this group stage to get a win against Nicolas Savan Ayra from France and Hakon Ali Björkansson from Iceland. So four players in this round robin group. Two will be advancing to the knockout stages later on. Beautifully pronounced, may I add those words? <laughs> Fantastic. And have Turkey a strong program in para table tennis? Um, I know that they have strength in other para sports. Um, I just wonder, is Turkey a, a hotbed for para table tennis? Uh, most certainly, especially in Europe, uh, they have a strong team, a big team and a successful team uh, all around, and not uh, just um, Osturk we see here, um, in some wheelchair classes, in women's as well. Um, definitely looking forward to them bringing some atmosphere to Sheffield as well. They usually uh, are a loud crowd. They're a good crowd, the Turks, I know that. and. Uh always impressed at the scale and the size of their Paralympic sports um, and seems to me that table tennis has a similar strength in depth. Yeah, it's good to see um, what support or the right support for para sports can do for people and also for the advancement of these teams. Well we have a decent crowd here at the English Institute of Sport, it may not come across quite so clearly on the screen but there's um, a good few hundred people in here uh, watching this and it's a good atmosphere day one of competition um, goes through to Saturday ending with the doubles and the finals of the singles events on on Thursday and after that we're starting the doubles which will be a new feature at the European Championships uh, we usually had uh, the team events following that but uh, now switching on to the doubles first featured internationally at the world championships last year and new discipline also for the paralympic games so this will be a great test event for a lot of teams to to see and seek who to send to to paris to grab a medal there that's that's great insight there from matea as uh teams uh, the, t the two players prepare plenty of preparation going on here isn't there there's a uh, consulting and talking and the referees are involved They're happy with the warm-up, but oh. I'm not sure what the... And the coach is now sitting inside the arena. No, he's going back outside. Oh, yeah, so I think we we lost the ball and one of the ball boys, <laughs> so that's why the Dutch coach was ready to jump in. But There we go. Yeah, I think that's the issue now. I don't want any of these barriers coming down in the middle of play. Correct. I understand now in, in the game that coaches are allowed to coach between points. It's uh, not just at timeouts. Is that something that's a, been a development in recent years? Uh, yeah, it's uh, only started for the last couple of years uh, before it was only allowed to, let's say, clap and only coach during timeouts and between the games. Uh, now uh, it's okay to do so when 
the ball is not uh, on the table. So a lot more impact from the coach during a session. So quite a long warm-up period this, isn't it? Yeah, For it's normally two minutes, but there have been a few issues, so... so okay. I think that's why the Empire is given some leeway to these two. Okay, and I think we're ready to go. The officials are settling them down. One last word with the coaches. In fact, Ostok looks quite a specimen. He's strong from the rear, doesn't he? Yeah, for body strength, of course, always comes in handy <laughs> yeah. when you're sitting in a wheelchair and can't use your legs. Not just in table tennis. No. <laughs> for everyday life as well. Here we go. Point to piece so far. You think that in these particular games, the the tactics are more of aggressive rather than the the lob and the small, the sort of the short. Yeah, game. most certainly. Um, classically in class five, you'd start off with the short backspin serve and then try to develop your attack from there. Still, still, yeah. And what what would their bats be like for the? Would they have different rubbers on here for a class five compared to another classification? Uh, yeah, we see a lot of inverted rubbers uh, in the lower classes, so like class one, two, certain class three players because uh, um, of the because of the limited. Um, balance and body strength a lot of players looking to slow the game down change the pace of the ball and play more tactically rather than with speed and strength not so much so in classes four and five as we can see nicely here it's uh, smooth rubbers it's thick rubbers so uh, just make it as fast as possible attack as strong as possible fascinating insight there so Van Grusen taking an early lead, but now it's pegged back to four all. Gets the look of the net. He leads 5-4, the Dutchman. Yeah, trying with a backhand attack here from the body. not the easiest shot to make but one that you have to try when sitting in a wheelchair quite a lot because of course you you aren't in a position to move your body as much other than lean in one way or the other yeah. a lot of these shots would come very unnaturally to let's say non-disabled players but uh, yeah when, when you're sitting in a wheelchair, you have to just uh, make use of those as well. Wouldn't looking for the angles and looking to move away from that uh, dreaded elbow position. Indeed. And what's the rule about the other hand hitting, leaning on the table or not leaning on the table? Uh, no, the, the non-playing arm uh, can uh, touch the table, but uh, only after you've already um, played the ball. And of course, you can't use it to lift yourself up again. So, it's close. 8-7 to Ostuk. Yeah, wonderful back and down That's the line a, here. Great shot. That was a super shot. 
it's great to see it from uh, from the back here where we our camera angle is uh, you can see the uh, the shots down the line as we call it Ostuk taking that two points advantage at a crucial time it's up to three points and this is and that's game that was a quick game wasn't it 11-7 in only four or five minutes it felt like yeah that's uh, like I said typical class five fast paced uh, game attacking style and um, yeah we've seen some of that I think it's more to come as the two warm up properly this time uh, get their foot into the match uh, it is their first one at this competition so uh, that's always tricky or can be tricky even with all the experience and the training you have well they've just made that into a five minute game it was four minutes prior to that so slightly dis slight discrepancy on screen it's uh, four or five minutes but uh, certainly a quick game that went through and Ostok gets first blood 11-7 seems a very ca uh, calm man for a Turk actually he's uh, playing very calmly yeah, not too much to be upset or uh, super excited about here yet I'm sure we'll, we'll see a different uh, game face later on in the competition if he reaches that. What uh, a that great seat. rally. There you wow. go. <laughs> great rally and uh, enthusiastic uh, reaction yeah. by the two. That was a fantastic rally. Credit both players there, but the point comes back to Turkey. Yeah, two weaker return here directly on the forehand side. Osturk just waiting for that kill shot. Tried with a lot of spin on the backhand here. It's an unforced error there from the Dutchman. Yeah, that's a no-no, yeah. always, but especially after uh, against uh, a competitor like Osturk and having lost the first game. Now this one's beginning to run away from him as well. 4-1, he trails. Needs to get some points back. Great shot. Yeah, great this shot. is really not a great idea, this uh, return directly to the Turks' forehand. I mean, you can see that he's waiting for it. And another great forehand as well. Uh, just Not so very decidedly going uh, into the ball with his backhand. Ooh. Kind of a safe serve here. Surprised he's not called a timeout just to settle him down. He's trailing 7 1, the Dutchman. But, wow, that was a great shot. <laughs> yeah, he does seem to have both sides of the table well covered with this killer top spins. Plays the let on that serve. It seems to be the only way for the Dutchman to save himself with a little bit of luck and <laughs> A very short ball. We always need a bit of luck. Nah, this one was actually not uh, badly angled, but still Stork was right there, ready. Oh, what a great return that was. It's incredible. You almost get the feel that the ball is just hitting his record unintentionally, Truly. but that's of course not the case. Yes. Yeah, look at that. Wow, that is just just amazing and such a quick finish of this game too that was even faster than before it does look I mean to be fair yeah, Osturk looks a complete class above I'm afraid there in this particular game and yeah and their uh, world rankings and uh, previous achievements as well as their uh, track record um, in encounters all speak uh, in his favor so this can't be much of a surprise. It's really only a question 
now if the Dutchman thinks he can do anything at all or has he just completely given up? Well, perhaps the next game is more about what can he put in his locker for confidence for the next game that he has to play. So, you know, he wants to try and be challenging in this third set. Yeah, ideally, even if he loses which uh, it look, by the looks of it he will uh, he'd like to at least uh, warm up a bit uh, get a few good shots on so he can try and use that as a confidence as something to build on for his next two games uh, that would be deciding uh, if he can continue with this tournament Van Grunsven serves in this third set could be the deciding one. Takes the first point. That's not only the top spins, the the back spins angles work for Osturk as well. Soft touch there for Osturk to win that point. So now he goes 2-1 up. Super shot there as well. Yeah, so much backspin on the serve and then anticipating, prepared for for the forehand attack. That was a good response there from the Yeah, the Dutchman, the Dutchman has to do something because waiting for Osturk to attack uh, is a suicide mission. This is that shot, so... Score is at 4 1. He really is in trouble, even when Osterk doesn't finish it off completely with the forehand. He was still too late on that ball, and yeah, last chance for a timeout here. Um, even though it's doubtful, it can change at this point. Yeah, it's. Um it's looking very good for the Turk, an easy first game, but nonetheless, you want to spend time at the table when you've come all this way, haven't you? You want to play at the table as long as you can to prepare for your next game. So, On the one hand, that's of course true, but uh, the first match can always be tricky, even for the favourites. Uh, so true, sometimes indeed. getting through that one um, is more difficult than uh, when you're when you're out of your head and already uh, in competition mode. Another great point for the Turk there, who's just overwhelming his Dutch competitor at the moment. Yeah, another attack attempt and successful this one, this time for the Dutchman. Uh, like we said, he has nothing to lose at this point uh, anymore, so he should try to at least make a couple of shots. Well, he's, he's pulled it back to 6-4. Osturk has to serve. And it may be an opportunity for the Turk to try something slightly different. Yeah, very good side rotation on that serve took the Dutchman by surprise. Much better here, but still the point goes to the Turk. Yeah, it's a little bit more aggressive from uh, Van Grunsven, isn't it? Hanging in there. Good yeah, shot. Now he has this element of surprise for Ostur because he didn't have to react to this kind of attacks in the previous two games. So now a couple of misses, but I'm sure that um, that won't take long for the Turk to get back in. Oh, well played. He hit the angles well there. He got back to 8 7 now. Good to see the Dutchman didn't give up. He hasn't. And another great shot. Now he's getting animated. Eight apiece. Here 
they decided to give us Turk a run for his money, at least in this third game. Did you get the look of the bounce there over the net? No, I think he missed, so... No, no, no. It's... Oh, Osturk. It's two match point it's now for yeah. Osturk after all. Despite the Dutchman catching on. Yeah, he's had a better game. And, and there it, it is. Finishes off like he played most of this match, really, with a really strong forehand. Tremendous finish. Tremendous finish. And uh, that was a real clean sweep from the Turk. Shows his intent in the competition. And uh, 15 minutes and it's all done. Yeah, what you're wanting to do uh, as the seeded player in the group, of course. Two more matches for each of these two players. But uh, we'll be back on with men's singles class four shortly now, right? Yeah, indeed. So thank you and uh, we'll be joining you shortly.
table 12, men singles class 9, Anders Sipas from Spain, Daniel Turin Stefan Gustafsson from Sweden, the umpire is Thomas Purcell from England. So welcome back to the English Institute of Sport here in Sheffield for the Para-European Table Tennis Championships and our next match here on Table 1 is uh, between Benjamin Marot from Belgium and Romain Simon from Great Britain. I'm joined by Matea who will be joining us on the commentary team again and you've been listening to her beautiful tones all day so great to have you back. And this is the second game for our Great Britain player here on this court. Uh, yeah, second game. We followed the first one earlier in the morning. Um, put on a really good performance against uh, Vasil Petruni from Ukraine. Lost that match 1-3. Uh, nevertheless, um, so did uh, his opponent today. 0-3 for him against Maciej Nalepka, the other two players in this group. Uh, so yeah, they'll be both looking uh, to sign in their, their first win uh, at this European Championships. And Simon has been a relatively new player into the program for Great Britain. So perhaps these players are, are quite well matched. Uh, yeah, no head-to-head -head for them, uh, unsurprisingly, since uh, Simon only started playing internationally last year. Uh, he said even himself that um, it was a big surprise uh, to be selected for the British so strong home squad uh, for these championships, but a great experience for him and uh, from what we've seen so far, uh, a deserved spot uh, in this team. Yeah, he's taken an early two, one all, sorry, it's one all, it's one all, and um, point there went to Simon to go 2-1 up. Something amiss there with the serve, do you think, Matea? Yeah, we'll, we'll do this again. Yeah, quite nice rallies right from the start for these two. Smooth rubbers, so more of an attacking style of play for the both. And Simon anyway looking to um, be aggressive, take control from the very start of each point. Well, his first match was with the Ukrainian Petrunov, as you said, who's quite an experienced player. So. Um, yeah, and a different type of player from his style, from his rubbers uh, as well. So I think actually this one here much more suited for uh, Simon to take on. He'll be liking uh, to play this uh, this game more. Yeah, he's made a great start. 6-1 he leads. And I think he got the lob there just in the corner and gets a 7-1 lead. Everything going right for the British player at the moment. That went into the net and just landed back on the French side to make it 8 1 to the British player. Oh, great oh, shot. Wonderful, wonderful down the line. Top spin and took uh, his opponent completely by surprise. And uh, plenty of British supporters in the venue and wow what a shot there again yeah he can do across the table as well and he's showing all sorts of talent here and that's the end of the first game on a mistake by the frenchman yeah this was uh, the belgian but this went as Sorry. fast as it co possibly could uh, great uh, performance for the home crowd that you've mentioned 
who are gathering here in the English Institute of Sports in Sheffield. And thank you for correcting me there, calling a French Belgian. No, no way. So the Belgian Marot. Yeah, you know us beaten. coming from small countries are a bit uh, touchy Ooh. about those things. <laughs> <laughs> Not, no, 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 I should, uh, should get that right. So that was comprehensive, 11-1, three minutes. And uh, it seems as if Simon has plenty of confidence in his tank despite the defeat this morning. But uh, Marot needs to come back quickly. Yeah, in each case, uh, one more uh, match for these two players and a difficult job coming to, uh, through from this group, needing to place first or second to advance to the knockout stages of the competition, to be one of the 15 players to continue. Indeed. And... Uh First point to Marot there. Simon's playing very aggressively, isn't he? He's oh, and uh, two quick early mistakes has put him on the back foot now. Now yeah, with uh, good placements of the serve, one wide into the forehand, the other wide into the backhand. Should be easier for Simon now when he's serving. There we go. Back to Marot for the serve, and it's uh, two apiece. Two defeats for the Belgian would be a difficult position to be in. To to come out of the group. Uh, most certainly, especially because it would be Petruniv uh, who he would be taking on next. Um, and that's the first seeded player in this group. So I don't think uh, losing the first two matches would make it uh, a good prospect uh, to win in that third one. Wow. Playing both sides of the table there, uh, Simon, very well. Good angles. Yeah, he has a great reach and demonstrated a variety in his game here as well, not only with the top spin attacks, but uh, also almost the tetra lobs um, with the backspin high balls uh, short on the table. And those lobs are made with a huge amount of spin though, aren't they, as well? Yeah, certainly, ideally, you'd want them to come back to your side of the table or at least very fi far out. Six three to score, Simon leads. Six four now. Good shot there from the Belgian, plenty of spin on that one. And difficult positioning for Simon to control that spin. Six, five. Yeah, the Empire now reminding him to toss the ball high enough. Good rally here. Certainly leveling up now. Yeah, it looks slow, but actually a lot of spin on those balls, so they aren't that easy to bring back. Another point there for Simon as Marot just hit that one long. 8 5 he trails, he serves. That was a dangerous gamble by Marot with the forehand, but I think Simon was looking to play it down the line. Oh, overhit that one. Un unforced error, would you say? That yeah, he's still well on track. Simon here to bring this second game to a close. 
moment of pause he then serves and suddenly finds himself 6-10 up Ooh, missed the kill <laughs> did a great job on that uh, forehand down the line as well as picking up uh, the net ball but then came just short it's difficult to recover when you have to um, adapt to a net ball and that's a point that's just been given away hasn't it uh, from the serve 11-7 the second set goes to the Brit who must be feeling very pleased with himself on that a bit more resistance in this second game by Marot. A few more mistakes uh, as well by Simon, but uh, still nothing to uh, get panicky about. Both games being played very quickly, just two four-minute lengths, but that one was quite close, that second game. Yeah, you can hardly believe that uh, we had uh, four or five minutes, but six points more played in the second game. Yeah, incredible. This really fast pace with the smooth rubbers and both players liking the attacking style of play. And within the world of para table tennis, how does Great Britain rank as a nation? What, what's the uh, what's the news on the ground? Well, we'll have to take a look at the medal count at the end of this tournament. But obviously, the British squad one of the strongest in the world. And now uh, here with the home ground advantage and the home crowd, uh, I'm sure they're looking to, um, well, just continue basically the successes from the last Paralympics, from the last World Championships and um, very much uh, on track uh, to continue all that great work in, in Paris next year. So, uh, and Simon actually a great example of this, uh, only started playing a couple of years ago, started internationally last year and uh, yeah, now look at him here on the Europe's biggest stage at home, um, pulling his weight uh, more than adequately. He'll be playing uh, men's doubles four alongside Thomas Matthews later on. Right. Looking forward to that a lot, says that Thomas uh, grounds him a lot that he can learn a lot from the more experienced players, players but but as i said uh, by the look of how he's playing here um, he'll be more than pulling his weight i expect well he's had a, a good start again i must mention there was quite a lot of slovenian influence in the great britain team yeah make sure you don't forget the <laughs> <laughs> in fact most of them were stood around us not long ago so um All square, three all now. And Marot has just taken a, a lead 4-3. So still work to do for the, the British athlete. Yeah, he shouldn't allow himself to trail back too much here. I mean, he, he did a good job uh, on the first two games and uh, he should continue that. Can't afford to uh, just consider the match won already he's got a great speed of hand he just really whips through the ball <laughs> looks oh. like he's pulled himself together and this was such an excellent shot that is way more difficult than it looks to execute that that lob uh, it takes a lot of good feeling and a lot of practice Five. 6-5, uh, a little bit sloppy there from Simon as he hit it long from the serve, but difficult sometimes with the amount of spin on the ball. Yeah, that's the thing with uh, table tennis or para table tennis. Um, you can't really see on the screen uh, how much spin is in a ball and how fast those balls are coming when you're sitting at the table. Um, certainly looks much easier from here than if it does from down there. And at 8-5, Marot has called for a timeout to go and speak with his coach in the corner, but um, it's a good performance, a good recovery from the defeat this morning against Petruniv, and uh, Simon is heading towards potentially 
an important win. Yeah, he looked a bit shaky in the middle of this uh, third game, but is now advancing again and last chance for Marat to still stay in this match. And do you see table tennis a game of momentum or consistency? Well, it really depends. Um, I mean, I'm always one for consistency, but the different players see things differently. You will once in a while see a match that you can just know which was that one point when things broke. But it's up to the players to hold mentally and uh, not allow those kind of moments to affect them too much. So they're back. And that's where now I would say Simon did a great job uh, coming back uh, into the lead uh, with really the mentality of an experienced player not uh, being bothered by a couple of points in a row that Marot won. A nice rally, long rally after the break and picked up an extra point there, Simon. Good, w good point. That yeah, was just over the table, unfortunately. Hit that long. It was a shame because he was well on the ball and could have made that point. This is one of the ones that you can't dwell too long on, otherwise you risk losing another couple. Stretched his man there well, didn't he? Yeah, nice angles on both sides here, but Simon really does have a good reach and didn't look too bothered by anything other than an excellent shot like this one, which yes. is basically unreachable and defendable. So 9-8, Simon leads. Oof, unfortunate positioning right in the elbow area right on the end line of the table. So Marat has fought back to 9-all. Really interesting finish to this game. A bit of safety going on. Well played. Well, really wonderfully played here from both players, Marat included. But well fought for Simon for this first match point. First match point. And Got it back. looks like it was over the table and here's the first win for Romain Junior Simon for Great Britain at his home World European Championship. And he looks very phlegmatic and very uh, Calm, nonplussed, but the crowd is congratulating him. We can hear that. So he pulled that 3 0, which is a good result for him, I think. Yeah, it's a great result, and uh, it keeps him uh, in the chances of uh, perhaps even advancing, advancing from this group uh, into the knockout stages later on in the competition. But in each case, he has uh, one more match against Maciej Alepko of Poland uh, to go to tomorrow. Well, thank you, everyone. Uh, great win there for Simon against the Belgian Marat. And uh, we'll be coming back shortly with our next game, which is between Abdullah Oshtuk from Turkey and Alexandra Delarc from France. And that's uh, in men's wheelchair class four. See you at six o'clock.
Good evening, everyone, and welcome back to the English Institute of Sport here in Sheffield, where we have the Para European Championships on for table tennis. And uh, we are into our next game. It's the six o'clock game, which, and it's uh, wheelchair class four. And uh, it's the second game of this tournament um, in this particular pool. And it's Abdullah Ozturk from Turkey taking on Alexander Delarc from France and uh, Osturk, um, strong competitor himself as well. Had a previous win against the Croatian 3-0, Tomislav Spai. And these two are going to be well matched in terms of rankings and competition. Just warming up at the moment. these European Para Championships if you have been watching previously well this tournament will provide 22 places for the Paralympics table tennis competition in Paris 2024 next year so a lot to play for good crowd here at the English Institute of Sport And a good atmosphere as Osturk prepares to take receive the first serve from Delarc from France. And the game's underway. First point, first blood to Delarc as Osturk goes long. Great point there again from Delarc. He picks up his second point. Good reach here, a real reach advantage. Delarc over his counterpart, Osturk, and it's a good opening from the Frenchman as he goes 3 0 in this first set. Osturk to serve. Along with the return. Still finding his range. Osturk, who incidentally has a, a player exactly the same name who played two games earlier in the wheelchair class as well. But he was called Ali Osturk. Don't know if they're uh, related or not. First points on the board for Ali Osturk with a smash after the lob from Delarc, just a bit too deep that lob. Good point again there from Delarc playing aggressively. Clips the edge of the table there. And Delarc with the pump fist. 6 1 the lead. Good spin on that serve. And Delarc wasn't able to cope with it. Second point for the Turk. Service now with the Frenchman. Turk long good aggressive play there for the for the Frenchman the, the backhand into the uh, left hand corner as we look at Osturk and Osturk picks up a third point 7-3 the lead and he will serve
good use of the spin, good aggressive play from Delarc. So the opening. Eight three. Too much spin to handle there for the Frenchman on that occasion. Point there for the Turk goes 4-8. But service back with Delarc. Huge amount of spin on that serve. Doesn't execute that one, hits the top of the net, bounces back on his side. Osterk picks up the point. Great play from the Frenchman, aggressive. Backhand cross court. 9 5 the lead. Good point there for Osterk. Clawing back. 6 9, he trails. again good spin which Delarc wasn't able to control so he's honing in on the Frenchman 7-9 Delarc again long suddenly having had a five point lead. He's. Ostok has come back to within one. Pressure building. And Ostok leveling up. Nine apiece. Undramatic. More about errors from the Frenchman. He's playing quite aggressively. And Ostok quite defensively. Osterk with the advantage of the serve. Oh, and the edge. Just got the edge on that one. So Delarc with set point. It's been a close first set between these two. What a great play there. Aggressive from both teams. 11-9 to Delarc in the first game. And that certainly got better as the game continued. These two players seem to be easily ma evenly matched. And the Frenchman was mainly in control. But Osterk came back at the end. So 11-9 for the Frenchman. The championships here still in day one of the competition. Everybody involved with the event. And table six is the other commentary table that we have, which is for standing competition two more games in the wheelchair class still to follow um, following this one is Rafael Schuper from Poland against Miguel Toledo from Spain that's in the wheelchair class one category followed by a class two game at nine at 7 30 1930 Frederica Crossara from Italy against Alexander Jezik from the Ukraine. We're back with Osturk. First point to the Frenchman again with an aggressive shot. The Frenchman with a long reach against Osturk. Good spin there from the service of Osterk. One apiece. 
the lark with the f serve. The lark goes long and trails 2-1 and that's off table as well so 3-1 the score to the Turk good start from him Three won the score. Osterk with the serve. And again, Delark just a bit long with that shot again, and Osterk leads 4 1. Good spin from Osterk. Goes long with that. Disappointed. Very expressive. 4-2, looks over to his coach, has a word. This is class four, so quite aggressive back, uh, um, shots going in here. Delark again, couldn't respond to that shot from Osterk, who's beginning to play much more fluently. And Delark making more mistakes and uh, 5-2, he trails, though he did win the first set. Osterk disappointed with that as he went long. 5-3, he leads with serve. Cautious play now between the two. Great shot there from Delarc, set it up well. Five four. Oster composes himself. Make sure that ball will go up six inches above the table height. Does great spin from both players. And Delark trying to just clip that one over the net. Hits the top of the net. And will trail six four with serve. Again, Delark. Not ambitious, but just couldn't plant it in the corner. Osterk has sort of come back well here. 7 4 up. Playing quite conservatively. Waiting for Delark to make that mistake once again. Delark is failing to execute on the opportunities he's being given. Whereas in the first set he was doing that. Osterk playing a safe game. Good point there for Delark. Sorry, it went long. Couldn't see that from this side, but... Uh, 9-5 now, Osterk with the mistake. The lock to serve. Again. Good shot there from the lock. Set that up well, beginning to flow a little bit more, but he still trails. 9-6. Osterk with a powerful shot there. Sets him up for set point. 10-6. A real seesaw event here going on. Delark won the first. Osterk on the brink of winning the second. And Delark played that one well. Navigated the table. Went in for the kill, 
And into the net from the Frenchman. Osterk battles back. 11 7. So this one is uh, proving quite a contest. Osterk seems to be growing in confidence. And Delark, the more flamboyant of the two players, is looking for a little bit more consistency. Resuming then for the third set. This will at least have another set after this one. One apiece between these two players. Delark opens up and gets the first point. And again, Delark now just clipping the edge of the table it would seem gets a 2-0 win continues to play in an aggressive manner teasing each other here great great defensive play from Osterk outmaneuvered the Frenchman who was going backwards from the table as Osterk hit a short ball into the corner left. <laughs> Levels the score, two apiece. Delark aggressive again. Staying true to his style, looking to play aggressively. Tosses it up high, Delark. Down the centre of the table. There's his opportunity and executes with a forehand powerfully deep into the table reproaches himself saying that's what I need to do more and more Osterk speaking not speaking to his coach wants to retrieve that ball likes it it's come well out of play just gives himself some time to compose himself and Osterk returns to serve at the table De Lark with a recovery shot, fantastic shot indeed, and it's 5-2 now. Re-energised himself. Great return from Osterk. Pulls it back, 5-3. Service with the Frenchman. Looks his opponent up and down. Cautiously from both parties, but that spin from Osterk was just too too much for Delark to handle. And Osterk creeps back within one, four five. The angle's being played now. Great rally there from both players, but Delark couldn't 
couldn't respond went long for that corner left hand corner of uh, Osterk and he's leveled the game five all having trailed two five Turk takes a one point lead there. Timeouts have been called. Delark looking to have dominated the play, being the more aggressive, has suddenly found himself one point down. With a number of errors he's made, or you've got to credit Osterk as to how well he's playing himself. multiple tables in use here at the English Institute of Sport as we're going through the preliminary stages of the pools all athletes involved Osterk recommences both players going down the middle of the table and Osterk just mounts pressure with his consistency Delark just getting a little bit frustrated. 7 5. Nice shot there from Osterk as he responds, and suddenly Osterk is picking up points. Goes to 8 5. He's won the last six consecutive points, Osterk. And that's a kiss of death as he rams one into the middle of the net. The lock leads 6 8. Yes! The lock makes a mistake there. Another point to the Turk, 9-6. Abdullah Osturk leads, having trailed 2-5. And now, after that shot from Delar, just seems a little bit impetuous. Doesn't seem to like the longer rallies, which Osturk seems comfortable with. This is game point. And Delark is long again as Osterk just shows that consistency. And Osterk takes a 2-1 lead in the sets. Having trailed from the first set. He's won the next two, 11-7, 11-6. This has the hallmarks of a five-setter. If Delark can just compose himself a little bit, plays quite aggressively. Feels a little bit frustrated, or looks a bit frustrated. Whereas Osterk is going for the uh, high percentage shots. Keeping the ball in play. Delark gets the first point as Osterk goes long for once. Point. 
Nice angle there from Delarc. Picks up the first two points, starts well. And he has service. 2 0 he leads, the Frenchman. Gets up. A third point with an ambitious shot which uh, Oshtuk couldn't respond and control. Delark with service. Great return from Oshturk, but the second shot was equally as powerful from Delark. And he's really built momentum back here. Knowing it's a, it's a set he can't lose, but he's 4-0 up. Goes 5-0 up. Great shot, great offensive forehand, cross court. steady game cat and mouse here who's going to blink first and suddenly Ostuk has blinked and it's six and no Ostuk yet to win a point having won the last two sets and Delarc has come back like a train misses that one and gives a further point. The lock with a high serve. With the lob, that comes. The lob didn't quite. Uh, work out for Osterk but Delac got the lob came back into his quarter he leads 7-1 comprehensive lead at the moment 8-1 Delac as Osterk goes long Delac misses that one second point for Osterk De Lark to serve, well in advance and in control of this particular set, but trails 2-1. Puts that one into the net, gives Osterk his third point. Patient table tennis here from both players, and De Lark Delarc picks up his own ball. Osterk serves 4-8 down. Good point there from Delarc closing in on this particular set, which he has to win to stay in this game. Long there from Osterk. So, game point for the Frenchman. The Frenchman misses that bottom corner. The ball sat up well for him. 10-5, he's still got another serve. Great shot there from Delarc, forced the error from Osterk. 
and that levels up the game again we're going into a fifth set and final one a decider Comprehensive win then from Delarg, 11-5. Fifth set between these two. Delarg, the much more aggressive player. Osterk looking at the consistent ball in. Different styles, he does open up now and then. But we've played half an hour so far. <laughs> Players back on court for this final and fifth set. Delarc, the Frenchman in red at the top of the table as we look at it on our screen. Oster at the bottom, nearest to the commentator. Oster and characteristically hit, hits the ball into the net in what was a relatively modest shot. Good shot there from the Frenchman. 2-0. and oh. He leads. The players stop for a timeout and refreshments. So both coaches talking it through. Certainly a great clash in this pool. Third match, second round game. Sorry, yep. Second match, second round. Osterk serves. Good shot there from Osterk. Two won the score now. Delac leads. All down to this fifth and final set. Osterk couldn't get his body round that one. Two points apiece. It's going to be an going down to the wire, neck and neck, these two. Delarc picks up that one. Oster, is it long? Throws it up. Good play here from both parties, and that was a hell of a winning shot from Delarc. Forehand, cross court, powerful. Bottom corner. Opens up a 4 2 lead. Tension visible from both players. Certainly, Delarc is the more demonstrative. As a Frenchman, we'd expect a good response from Oster. Kick 
keen to play with that ball, both parties. Osterk comes with the serve. The Frenchman just a little bit over aggressive again. It's his style. Gonna live with it. Four points apiece. Into the net from Osterk. He's trying to be delicate. Turn around in this final set. Delac serves, gets an early point. Aggressive again. 6 4. To and fro, to and fro. Delac with his nose in front, but serve goes back to the Turkish player. Abdullah Osturk. Has a word with his coach, takes some advice. Has Turk disputing something there with the referee. Points stays, 7-4 for Delarc. Osterk ideally needs to win this one. Close the gap. Been a great game. Fifth and final set. Delarc goes long. Those rallies played like that seem to favor Osterk compared to Delarc. Wow, Osterk with a great offensive shot. Brings it back to within one point, six, seven. The Frenchman now with the opportunity to extend his lead as he goes to serve. An unusual serve indeed, and I don't think he meant that. It was a bit of a little disciplined shot there that's leveled the score now, seven points apiece. Quite a number of Turks in the crowd making their voices heard. The French are here too, though. Seven apiece, all to play for. Delarc. Couldn't respond. And suddenly Osterk back in the lead, 8 7, having trailed by three and four points in this set. And takes up another important point. And Delarc. Just struggling to find the answers as Osterk suddenly goes on the offensive after these slow rallies. Oh, and Delarc goes long and suddenly match point for the Turk. Match point, 10-7 he leads, having been down four points in this set.
Bilal picks up a point. But he needs to win the next two to stay in the game. Osterk takes his time. Prepares. Here comes the ball toss. Oh, a fortunate let there for Delarc. Cat and mouse going on right now. 10 9. Delarc goes deep with the return, levels the score, 10 points apiece. Can't separate these teams, or these players, sorry. And Delarc with the serve, needs to win by two clear points. 10 all in the deciding set. Pressure builds. Oh, great shot from Osterk. Great shot. Didn't feel like he was going to play that. 11 10, he's now got match point again. It's his fourth match point. And Osterk picks up the win. Twelve ten in that final and deciding set. What a great game. Forty minutes of cracking table tennis there, but Osterk squeaks out the win. Tremendous effort from both players and congratulations to Osterk. Still remonstrating and demonstrative about the win, but a great win. And we'll be back here at uh, 1845, quarter to seven for Rafael Schuper from Poland and Miguel Toledo from Spain in the wheelchair class one for the men's competition. Sorry, women's competition. Slovenia. Paul Nichols 
Thank you. 
And welcome back to the English Institute of Sport here in Sheffield for the European Para Table Tennis Championships. And we're on to our game, slightly delayed from its uh, quarter to seven start. Um, and in your frame is Rafael Schuper from Poland and Miguel Toledo from Spain. And it's the men's competition. Class one, wheelchair. So in this particular competition, expect that sort of use of the lob more often and angles. <laughs> Toledo, the man from Spain with a really good reach. As the two players warm up. The previous game was a five-setter, which is why it was delayed. So I think both players have had their warm-ups. And we are ready. Toledo to serve. Gets the first blood, 1-0. Schuper goes along with his first return. Along with his second return. Looking to uh, return to that same corner. There's that lob. And Toledo couldn't reach it. Again, there's the lob. Great smash there from Schuper. Levels the game, two points apiece. Toledo serves. Gets a, Schuper gets the uh, gets the net call on that occasion. Toledo to serve again. What a great lob and return there from Schuper. Such a skillful thing to do at such pace. Four-two to Schuper. There's the lob from Toledo. Schuper makes short work of that one. Five-two. He leads. Toledo working on his dexterity. Ball is returned. Schuper will serve. 5 2. There's the lob and there's the smash from Schuper. He's reading it well and extending his body well. Yet when you look at these two athletes build, you'd think Toledo has the bigger reach. And Schuper's doing a great job of getting that ball back. 6-2, Schuper leads. Toledo to serve. Back into the net. Toledo again. There's the lob. Unsuccessful on this occasion. Seven three the score. Eight three now to Schuper. Nine three to Schuper. The ball was long from Toledo. Oh, lovely serve there from Toledo. Unreachable for Schuper. Change of tactic. Oh, and Schuper responds cross court with his backhand. 10 3. He's now on set point. 
Went big. Went for it. 10-4. There's the lob. Toledo successful. Super couldn't reach. 10-5. Still five set points. There's his lob and out of reach of Toledo who couldn't get across and 11-5 Schuper seems quite quietly confident Schuper happy with that One more game to play in the wheelchair category after this one, where Federico Crossara from Italy will meet Alexander Jezik from the Ukraine in men's class two. That'll be another wheelchair game. Schuper awaits his opponent. They're back at the table. Work to do here for the Spaniard. Puts his strapping on. Stretches that long torso. are being made to wait everybody's ready first blood again to Schuper and again Toledo couldn't make make it good there he had the opportunity hits into the net goes down 2-0 and now 3 and 0 with a unforced error. Looking for that short serve and he's just failed again. 4 and 0 runs away from him. Nice little lob there from Schuper. 5-0 he leads seems to be taking command of this game 6-0 now Toledo just unable to respond first point for Toledo super with his backhand into the net Great lob. Toledo liked that one. Great skill there from the Spaniard. And Schuper fortunate with that. Goes 7 2 up. 8 2 up now. Toledo needs to serve this set running away from him as well the lob but this time Toledo gets it a bit deep there from Schuper. eight three Toledo into the net doesn't help him Schuper couldn't get the angle there back 9-4, powerful, powerful shot there and takes him to 
in this six set points. Nice play from the Spaniard. Quick backhand, Schuper couldn't respond. 10-5, there's the lob. Great shot. And Schuper takes that set 11-5 and 2-0. He leads. Toledo just can't make an impression on the man from Poland. was a quicker set there just four minutes in length and uh, Toledo needs to find a way of getting through this player but Schuper has remained quite consistent in these two matches 11-5 11-5 makes fewer mistakes this is Class one of the wheelchair where dexterity is at its most difficult. Players returning to the table. Not the most hygienic thing to do, but they lick their ball, lick their table tennis bats, and uh, I'm sure that's. Uh, the equivalent of shining a cricket ball somehow with your own sweat for those who watch any cricket super quite expressionless in control of this game 2 and 0 he leads Toledo, Miguel Toledo gets the first point and he needs to win this set. There's the lob, Toledo makes it, good return, good rally here but Another great backhand lob with spin. Takes the ball out of the Spaniards' reach. Schuper levels the score, one apiece. And that sets Schuper up for the second point. Toledo had leant over and couldn't return. Deft lob there from Schuper. Just out of the reach of Toledo. Different tactics in class one wheelchair. Toledo couldn't get that. Looking for the angle. Schuper 4 1 up. Timeout called here from Schuper. Toledo staying at the table. Drinks coming on.
Toledo looks uh, a little resigned in this one. And Shooter looks quite, quietly confident. In fact, he seems to be watching the other game at the moment. Players back at the table. Spanish coach still talking. In super, just ready to go. Seems almost completely disinterested, knowing he's well up in this game and well in control. But things can happen. Toledo to serve. He leads 4-1, sorry, he trails 4-1 and by two sets to love. Gets a point, 4-2. Service from Schuper. Goes to that corner, well responded by Toledo, 4-3. Shooter. Eyes his man up. Goes to the same side. There's the lob. And Toledo just can't make it. Shooter goes 6 2 up, according to the scoreboard at courtside. And Toledo isn't able to get that service over the net. Does that time and gets the point. 7 3. Schuper with the serve. That looked as if it was out. There's the lob. Good finish from Toledo. 7-4 top of the net from Schuper goes long 7-5 Toledo hanging in he's got a couple of serves now balances the ball on his bat and Schuper goes long. Smiles at himself, shakes his head. 7-6. May have been a little bit too uh, relaxed in the last time out. Toledo couldn't make use of that lob. It was in his reach on that occasion. 8-6 to Schuper. There's the lob and beautifully placed Toledo couldn't recover his position went backwards couldn't get there in time maneuver his chair sufficiently 9-6 10-6 and all of a sudden match points Toledo serving to stay in the match gets the first point only if it goes over the edge of the table and it does We'll use the same tactic and gets the edge of the board. Very sportsmanlike from uh, Schuper. 10 7. Doesn't get it this time. The point goes to Schuper. Toledo. Couldn't make the serve, and that's a three sets to love victory for Schuper from Poland against Miguel Toledo from Spain. They shake hands, and that game's 
well in the back for Rafael, Rafael Schupa of Poland. And our next match is due on at 7.30 this evening. It'll be our final game. So we'll be expecting Federico Crossaro of Italy and Alexander Jezik from the Ukraine. And so we'll be back to you in about 15 minutes' time.
Welcome back to the English Institute of Sport. And uh, my name is Yuri Matishan. I'm joined by the Irish team manager and coach, Gavin Maguire. Good to see you back, Gavin, after your successful Irish lads doing well. Yeah, thanks for having me back. It's, uh, it's been an interesting day for us. A couple of wins on the board and still in play tomorrow. So let's hope we can uh, qualify for the knockout rounds. Yeah, that's going really well. And this game in front of us is our final game for this session and this evening. And uh, it's between Federico Crossara of Italy and Alexander Jezik from the Ukraine. Uh, Crossaro's had a win against one of our Brits here at the European Para Table Tennis Championships earlier this afternoon. He beat Chris Ryan 3-1. And uh, these guys are ready to go. We're just awaiting, I think, either the arrival of the officials. One of, one of them is in place. So good wins uh, for your Irish contingent. One expected, one not expected. Yeah, one one good one for Colin Judge in the men's class three earlier on. He defeated Alexander Ogren from Sweden, um, one of the top ten players in the world. So really good to get over the line, 11-9 in the last set. Big confidence booster for him and a, and a good chance to win his group now. Small delay on here. We're uh, awaiting a ball boy or ball girl to come into place. Seem to be in short supply at the moment. But once we get a, a ball boy or ball girl in place, we'll be into the action. Two players waiting patiently here. They are indeed, and uh, especially for the last game of the evening. And these guys want to make the eight o'clock bus home. <laughs> indeed, um, but it's been a good day of competition. Things have gone smoothly so far. And your guys, do they find out their um, schedule this evening? Yeah, they, they know the schedule now for tomorrow, so it's just a matter of getting home, getting prepared and deciding what uh, what way to do it tomorrow in terms of timings for practice and warm-ups and all that kind of stuff now. But uh, right now it's about recovery and just getting over the big battles that they played in today. So the guys are strapping up now as... Um the officials are in place. And what lowdown do you have on either of these two players, Kevin? Hey, Alexander Jesik is a player I've come up against a few times with, in coaching terms. Um, very strong in class two. Quite a few gold medals to his name. Uh, defensive on the backhand side. Tries to play more topspin with his forehand. And uh, I think he'll be the favourite here today. But Crisara ranked number 10 in class two, so he's no pushover either. So Crisara with serve. We just oh, we're just doing a warm up now. Yeah, oh, we're going for a warm up enough. after the delay. Yeah, fair enough, fair enough.
The Ukrainians seem to have a, a pretty decent squad of para table tennis and in fact para sports they've been pretty strong for a number of years now across Paralympic sports. Yeah they have a large contingent here and almost a player represented in every class that's quite strong and probably led by Alexander Diduk in the men's class eight number one in the world and one of the best para, para players out there. The man yeah. we have in front of us here, Mr. Jesik, has a couple of bronze medals in the European Championships in Class 2, 2015 and 2013, I think, so he's no stranger to being in the business end of this kind of major event. It's interesting because uh, my father's Ukrainian, my mother's Italian, so I'm not quite sure who I should be rooting for. Here we go. First point on the board for Jezik. He goes two up. Krasara to serve. A bit of lob work there. Yeah, we've been sp seeing that all day today, really. Players getting those high balls and angles to try and exploit the opponent and their inability to reach the shorter balls on the table. Yezik with the serve now. Long there from Krasara. Aiming for the angles there, going for the corners. Well, it's fine margins really here. What can look like a, a really poor unforced, unforced error. One millimetre in a different direction and it's, a, and it's an amazing angled shot. That looked like a let, but... Uh, didn't see the... Referee's hand go up. At the moment, Jezik leading 6-1. Making easy work of it so far. And there's a, a good serve from Krasara. Jezik lines that up into the net from Krasara. Been a long day for these guys. They'll have been they played earlier this afternoon and waiting a few hours to play your next game. It's a it's a waiting curve, isn't it? I mean, you're, you're actually here at the venue. You're not going back to your hotel, so. Yeah, and fatigue can play a, play a big part in para sport as well with the varying range of disabilities. Some fatigue quicker than others, so we might see some tired players out there. Prasara coming back into it, 4-7 he trails, but he's got the serve. Nice shot there from Jezik, deep, deep in the table. Good rally here. Oh, well played from the Italian, cross court. Back to within three, Jezik has the advantage. Good return, coped with the uh, touch from the net as well. So Jezik, five, nine up, streaking ahead. That lob works again there, Kevin. Yeah, it's 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 a brilliant shot from Jezik and you can see Krasara all throughout this set hasn't really been able to deal with it. So still match point for Jezik. He leads 10-6. a good rally and uh, Grisara 
failed to make that one. It's 11-6. That's the went long. Couldn't tell from here, but it went long. And 11-6 is the first set to Jezik. Seems quite untroubled by it all, Jezik. Yeah, he's a cool customer, this guy. You know, I don't think even if he's winning or losing, it never looks like it's phasing him, really. He's been around the block for a long time, so um, definitely able to handle the pressure. Certainly one of the more experienced players. When you say he's round the block, it looks as if he's been in the game for a good couple of decades. Yeah, absolutely. He's uh, one of the people that's been around the para table tennis scene for a long, long time. I would imagine being scheduled so late in the day, does it make, does it allow you to have a little bit of a rest in the morning where or are you potentially going to be scheduled back at nine o'clock there is potential that you could be in at nine i mean most situations the organizers will phase it out that the the men's class class two now will be a slightly later start in the morning but it's not to say that there's no chance of a nine o'clock start in the morning well all eyes on the draw then later on Jezik strapping up. Yeah, both players using the strap to support their grip. Is that just tape or bandage or? Uh, it's kind of a, a stretchy tape. I'm not sure what the what the technical term would be, but uh, it's a stretchy form of tape that they can then stick stick together, and it just provides them a bit of stability with their grip if they have issues. Well, Jezik's got the longest piece of tape I've ever seen, so... Uh, yeah, this, this rapping is going on for a while. <laughs> like a boxer. I know. <laughs> and it puts it in. And we're good to go. That gentle serve there. Jezik unable to reach. Yeah, a couple of times Crossara's won with that now. Might see it a little bit more often. Crossario. Starting well in this second set. He goes 3-0 and up and suddenly Jezik has got a fight on his hands. Good point from Jezik. But the rallies are certainly no, um, you know, the sub real substance of these rallies now. Krasara is getting into this game. Good okay, serve. serve. Out to the other corner now. Short serve on the backhand side this time. Long and top spin out to the forehand. Trying to vary what he's doing. Wow. Maybe a little bit of luck involved, but you need that. He's opened up a 5 1 lead, Krasara. Coming back into this. Just a bit long with that one. 5 2. Drifted away from him there, 5-3. Got to use his service here now, he's got to keep his lead. And the ball, they have to, for the serve, it still has to be six inches up. Yeah, six inches up and it's got to be flat in their hand as they're, as they're tossing. Obviously, there are certain players that would have issues with their fingers, but if there are no issues, it's got to be straight in the palm of the hand. And then a six-inch toss. Rosara 
skillfully gets that serve over again. Wide, wide serve though. I think they're complaining here that it was a wide serve. The, the serve has to go off the end line. So I believe we're going to have a let serve here if, I'm, if I know my stuff. Discussions with the official. It is a let serve. 5 4 the score remains. Prasara just unable to get that one and some good rallies here between these two guys. It's five all. Jezik coming all the way back. Now takes the lead 6-5. Just when he, he was in trouble, he hits the next five points. Good response from Krasara. Oh, great shot. shot. Well done. That's the first one of those high balls that he's been able to return with a, with a strong, powerful smash. So give him a bit of confidence now. There's that short serve, but too short. Too short indeed. He's mixing it though. I think you can really see the step up in quality in the afternoon session here. We're seeing number ones and number twos in the groups playing each other and having a lot of a lot more quality within the games. So Jezik is edged ahead, 8-7. The wily Ukrainian just getting his nose in front. And Krasara gets that bounce there, just hits the edge of the table, levels the score eight apiece. Kind of a crucial game, this one. If Jezik gets 2-0 two, two up. Oh, well, that's an unforced error, isn't it? Another, another missed serve there. It's just devastating for Krasara. Oh, Followed good up, recovery. Though. That's a great shot. I think you're dead right. Yuri really needs to get this set on the board if we're if we're going in 2-0. I think Essex looking good, but 1-1 one, one anybody's game. Great shot from Krasara. And suddenly he has that set point. 10-9 he leads. Composes himself. There's the lob and makes it. So uh, one set all now between the Italian and the Ukrainian. Did well to come back there after a couple of unforced errors on the serve. Showed a bit of metal there to, to stay in and win. That's uh, setting this game up nicely. Nobody wants to go home just yet, Yuri. <laughs> potentially apart from us and uh, but no that's a, a great display good battle for Sarah having lost the first set comes back 11-9 yes it looked untroubled but um, quite a few errors in that second set Yeah, you could see there was signs there that Crossara has got a game inside him that he can play. If, if, if he can play, he's got a chance to win here. It's just a matter of maintaining that game, you know, maintaining that level that he showed throughout that second set. I think it's fair to say that yes, it would be the more stable player, but Crossara has certainly got a, a good level in there. Well, Krasara has got a pretty simple wrapping mechanism, but uh, Jezik has the longest piece of tape that I've seen in this championship so far. <laughs> if we, um, we should put this to music, actually. It'd be... Uh, Quite interesting, but 
think he borrowed this off Alexander Usyk. <laughs> he did. He did. Are they allowed any assistance in taping? Or yeah, if the players wish to have support and, and have somebody there to, to manage it for them, they, they can. But yeah. A lot of players will, will choose not to have it if they don't need it. Right. Even if it takes a couple of seconds longer. So the guys are back for the third set. One set apiece. Jezik with the serve. Good win. Good shot there from Jezik. Kosara trying the lob. Yes, it goes long on that one. Surprising error there, really, right, in his, right on his backhand, right in the distance where he wants it, and unforced error. And another one, right in the middle of the table. And Prasara, 2-1 up. Yes, it gets to that one, short serve, but Responds well to a piece. This is going to go neck and neck for a while. I uh, just get that feeling. Lovely shot there. Excellent shot. Excellent shot. I just don't know how they can sort of feel that with their racket and just get that height and. And to do it under pressure. Oh, he got the look of the net there, and Jezik was 4-2 up. But the rallies are uh, great rallies. Jezik doesn't get the, uh, the lob on that occasion, Kev. So 3-4 for Sarah to serve. Four apiece. Music making errors more often than you think, and uh yeah, it's maybe just that thing that we spoke about earlier with fatigue. You never know if there's a little bit setting in here for Yesik. Gets the kill on that one. Gets his nose back in front. Yesik five four. Great shot there from the Italian. Five apiece. Plenty of atmosphere still in the hall. And Crisara executes. I'm just starting to get a little bit worried here for Jesik. Yeah. Uh, I don't like what I'm seeing in terms of his body language. He's starting to just look like he's got some issues. Doesn't look comfortable. And another error there from Jezik and uh, not calling it a, a timeout or anything at the moment, is he? Just uh, continues seven five. So that gets a point back. Seven six. Jezik pulls it back to 7-all. Prasara with the serve. Good return there from uh, Jezik. And He's turned it back on again yeah. now. Three points direct in a row. Prasara with a couple of errors. He's a very uh, unemotive looking player. and Jezik just... Stoic looking, eight apiece. These guys are going to the wire. Oh, bit oh. of luck there for Krasara. The net and spin out from Jesik, just unable to control it. Well, Jesik needs to get this point. Nine eight.
He gets it. Levels Good the serve. game. Good under pressure, yes. It doesn't really change what he's doing at any stage. Nine apiece. Ooh, Just long. goes long. And fired up Crossari, gave a little fist there. Going 10-9 up, set ten, point. Indeed, 10-9 with serve. Having been one set down. Short serve, tried again, but not short enough. Yes, yep. able to just put it away. Made it look easy. Well played, Jezik. That was a great rally. Two times there, Crosaris tried the shorter and the short and high approach, but not short enough. 11-10 to Jezik. Well, it says 10 all on the score. Sorry, my fault. Now Crisario is in ahead, 11-10, getting ahead of myself. And the lob came to the rescue, Kev. Absolutely. <laughs> yes, it hasn't had any issues with that shot today. 11 all. Feels like a real battle now. What a recovery oh, from Crisara. How has he done that? I think there was a little bit of hit and hope in there. Both guys stretching their torsos and... I'd be surprised if we don't see a long and fast serve. Crisaro gets it, 13-11. So uh, he goes 2-1 up, having been one set down. And he'll be changing ends, so uh, Crisaro having beaten Christopher Ryan earlier from Great Britain this afternoon, finds himself two sets to one up. And these games are getting closer and closer and closer. So Crisaro seems to be uh, a lot more confident in this now. Not sure if it'll be an upset, but it'll be uh, a great win if he pulls it off against Jezik. Yeah, absolutely. It'll be a huge win for him, but I still think there's a long way to go in this contest. But uh, as I mentioned earlier, I'm just not sure how Jezik is physically, or I, th I think there's something going on there. Doesn't look himself. And those those are the factors that you don't know about, do you? In uh, para sports, it, a bunch of combinations. Six, eleven, eleven, nine, thirteen, eleven. It's been a great contest. Each set has taken longer and longer. Jezik with a long list of medals to his name <laughs> needs to fight back and win the next two sets if he's to, pro if he's to take a, a stronger place in this particular pool yeah and surprisingly enough Jezik's ranking is, doesn't really reflect the player that he is he's, he's been slightly inactive on the tour for a couple of years and playing less than usual which has seen him fall out to number 17 on the ranking list, but in my books, he's, he's favourite here, even though Corsair is, is number 10. Certainly from the first set we saw, it looked as if Jezik was quietly in control, but Corsario has certainly come back well. Just got a bit of noise there in the crowd coming as Paul Karabatic plays next door to these guys. Yep. The home fans supporting. Indeed. Still here. Jezik takes the first point. Right. 
Jezik tried to recover there, but one apiece. That's an unusual error there. That, that sort of Jezik is just struggling to get yeah. shots back that he would normally look as if he yeah, would get these, back. These shots are right within his range. There's no real reason for him to be making those mistakes. Sarah's really taken the initiative. He's in control here, 4-0. Yep. 4-0. And uh, Jezik has to really respond. It's his first point. These two players will have to uh, just close out all this noise coming from the GB crowd for a game on another table yeah I don't think those players will even really hear it to be honest they're in the zone they're doing their own thing and I think a lot of players enjoy that kind of atmosphere really cool indeed Jezik picked up the last two points great rally here from, and he picks up a third so Jezik might Fighting see an back. Italian timeout soon. Possibly. So Cresario lets a 4 0 lead slip and suddenly it's 4 all. But he has serve. Did that touch the edge of the table? I couldn't tell. Don't think so. No. Think that went to Italy there. Cresario, 5-4. There's the lob, and he got it. Brilliant. And that game next door has gone 3-1 to Paul Karabatic, so we're the last game left in the hall here now. Indeed. All eyes on this. 6-4 to the Italian, he leads 2-1, Jezik with the serve. And Jezik, characteristically into the net. And 7-4 is quite an advantage in what's been pretty close throughout. Jezik unwinds. Timeout's been called. Timeout for Ukraine here. Yeah. Yes, he's going to get some advice. He can eat, make some changes and come back into the game. It's a crucial stage, isn't it? He just doesn't seem to be able to get going. It looks like the Ukrainian coach is telling Yesik here that he's maybe being a little bit too passive. He needs to be aggressive with his shots. Certainly looks that way anyway. Yeah, yeah. He it's certainly been different from the first game he came the, from the first set he played he seemed to be much more fluid and it's as if doubt has entered or he might be in pain and struggling um, but Cresario's certainly fought back and he's justifying his higher ranking at the moment And uh, everybody's staying behind to watch this last game. So many rituals that these players go through. Your favourite one happening now with Absolutely. the strap on, the strapping up. Yeah. There must be a quite a degree of discomfort for him to unstrap but then again he needs to wheel his chair so he has to unstrap doesn't he yeah absolutely so. and that's why you would see some players in maybe class one they would have someone there to wheel them to the coach so that they can they maybe don't have to unstrap or they can take time doing it so 
Jezik ready to serve. Misses with his return. Again, really uncharacteristic there. It's, it's right on his racket, right in his range. No reason to miss. It's increasingly looking good for Cresario. Tough shot there. Good response from Jezik. 8-5. Four points lead. It's a, it's a, it's a good lead in... Sorry, three-point lead in, in this final set. Oh, and Jezik just hits long. He hits long and the Ukrainian is behind by four. There's daylight there now for the Italian. Yeah, that's a bit more like it, those balls right in his range. Playing a little bit stronger. But he's really got to go for it now, hasn't he? I mean, he's done it again. There's a much quicker shot. Well, you can see now he's doing what his coach asked him, you know, long and fast service, follow up with a strong attack, and, and he's favoured in the point every time. Mixed up at one of those specials. Absolutely. Beautiful lob from Jezik and three points on the bounce, 9-8. He trails. Oh, and suddenly the point for Cresario leaves him with two match points. Jezik with the serve. Oof. A flick of the net oh, and that's it. He got the flick of the net and he gets there and Cresario, having trailed 1-0, wins the next three sets and takes the game 3-1 tonight. And Cresario outdoes Jezik, so thank you, Gavin. And uh, that concludes all our games here tonight at the English Institute of Sport. So please join us tomorrow at 9 o'clock when we'll be back with day two of competition of the European Para Table Tennis Championships in Sheffield.